Welcome to the chaos. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the chaos. I'm your host, Mikey Tailman, alongside my co-host, Danny J. Gomez. Today in the chaos, yo, man, we've been having some really good pre-conversation, so I'm hyped to get into the conversation. You all may know him as Manny on Ruthless. Mm -hmm. We know him as one of the <laughs> kindest, sweetest people in the industry. Josh Adey. Appreciate yeah. you having me. Yeah. 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 Thank you for getting yeah. my name correct. Oh, yo, man, I asked him like three times. Like, yo, man, Butchered how do I pronounce this? Butchered about 15 times before the camera's on, but I appreciate yo, it. Yo, man, hey, you got to pay attention to Welcome. detail, all right? No, all right. man, we're so happy to have you on. Um, I go to the gym with this guy, and obviously, I, when I work out with him, I feel like <laughs> afterwards, because yeah. I got to go work it in, because he's f***ing huge and puts up a lot. You trying to match him? Yeah, shit? man, but like, the coolest thing about working out with him is like, we get lost in conversation. Absolutely. And like, workout's supposed to take 45 minutes, it's like two and a half hours, yep. but I leave there Standard. feeling so elated. So yeah. like, I'm hyped for you to talk to him, everybody else to hear him, like. It's a mental and physical workout, like. Yeah, man, and that's so yeah. necessary. Yeah. So let's jump into it, homie. Tell us a little bit about yourself, um, how you got into the industry, a little bit how you came up. You know, you got some really cool stories and a really cool background. Yeah, um, I feel I feel like I've lived three lives already. Like, I'm 29, but I feel like I've been here for a really long time, you know? Like, I've done a lot in my years. Um, I played professional sports. I did the college um, basketball thing. I, well, I got recruited to college. I played overseas. I played in the G League, uh, tried out for the Celtics, and then from there transferred over to uh, TV and film or acting. But everything that I had learned through sports um, really propelled me to come into this industry um, and not be jaded or hindered by um, a lot of the things I see other actors struggle with. S feeling inadequate was one of those things. Mm -hmm. Like I remember being one of the reasons why I left sports is because when I was between 19 and 21, I was NBA ready at that time. I had I come from a religious family, super religious family. So Seventh Day Adventist, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. No. I couldn't play basketball on Friday nights and Saturday nights. And that's when, you know, AAU games are, varsity right. games are, college coaches are coming prime, out. Prime time. It's prime time, yeah. So a lot of my recruiting was jacked up because I was this, you know, really talented <laughs> kid. Um, but because of my my faith. And my family's decision, I was bouncing around from school to school. I went to a couple of Seventh-day Adventist schools. I went to a couple of Baptist schools, a couple of public schools. So my recruiting got janky. Um, by the time I decided to go to college, you know, the recruiting was so, I couldn't be found. I popped up in Baltimore. I was getting recruited by like Maryland, Georgetown, like all these different schools, Penn State. Um, they want a sure thing. They want to, you know, it's an investment. Ended up going to a D2 school in, in Washington, D.C., Got injured. First practice. I'd never been injured my whole life. First practice, college career, injury that took me out for four months. Spent a year and a half there. Um, went to JUCO after that, and I snapped my leg in half. What? So I don't know if you guys remember the Kevin Ware, like from, I think it was Louisville. Louisville. Yeah, that NCAA game? Yeah, Oof. it was the same injury. And oh, after man. that, you know, that's, that's when gruesome. it started going downhill from there. Yeah, like a tip hip fracture. So basically my shin, my tibia and fibula were just snapped in half. Yeah. It's crazy. You haven't been injured up to that point and all out of nowhere. Yeah, like I, I never been injured, you know, my whole high school career. And as soon as I got to college, injury, 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 injury. And, you know, when that happens to you, because it is a business after that. It's not yeah. high school, you know, it's all fun and games, you know. After that, you know, it starts to get real and it's a business. Did that mentally take a toll on you? I was never, I never, to this day, I don't think I fully recovered from whatever happened to me with basketball, you know. Like, I've come to peace with it because I feel like everything that basketball provided for me um, geared me for to be an actor. But as far as the game and... Yeah, I feel like it's like an ex that I have like this. The what if. Yeah. yeah. This what if for like, you know, just like this little like, I love you, but I, I hate you deep down. Yeah. You know, but it, it was good to me. And, you know, um, for that, um, for everything it taught me, I can't be mad for that, you know. But it is difficult for me to watch. To this day, it is difficult for me to watch certain, certain games. So how was that transition then from playing basketball that you love so dearly and put so much time and effort into into the acting world right um i'm gonna say this i came into acting very naive like i remember being in dc after i stopped playing um and i was like what do i want to do man so i spent a year being a trainer 
and I was a trainer at Lifetime um, Athletic in Columbia, Maryland. I learned a lot about people because I never had a nine to five, you know, until I until until I took that job, and um, I was kind of in a really like. What's the word? I was in a really open, just flowing. I didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, I was trying to figure it out, you know, like like we all do. And, you know, one of my friends who had been um, going to school out here, getting her master's in filmmaking, we hadn't spoken to high school together. We had never spoken in high school, but I posted something because I was in France and she commented on my picture. And she posted something because she had met some actor that I really, like, you know, really admired. And so we connected on Instagram. Long story short, we ended up swapping lives. I ended up coming out here to get my master's um, for acting, and she ended up being a trainer. Her name's Victoria Tapp. Um, That's fine. But I came out here super naive. And I, t- and I was naive because I didn't know how difficult breaking in was. Oh, man. <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea. Like, I was like, oh, I'm decent looking. Like, you know, maybe this (laughs) will work out. Like, there's a bajillion people here that look like me. So I'm like, (laughs) bro, it was was crazy. But I feel like being that naive really helped me because if I had known how difficult it was before I left to come here, it would have deterred me. Yes. Because I had been rejected. I'd felt like damaged goods already, I felt inadequate. I felt all those things, and I vowed that I would never feel like that again. I I never wanted um, a profession to make me feel like that again. And so coming out here, um, I was in school. Everything worked out very smoothly for me. Like... And it's funny because when I have conversations with certain actors, you know, we all talk about the struggle, you know, before it takes to get (laughs) on. The struggle. With your music. (laughs) You're musician, actor, writer, model, whatever. Like, there's some sort of struggle period that people seem to go through, right? Like a little. Some some are longer than no, others. Uh, or... Not a little, bro. <laughs> not a little. Some are longer we than still others. Struggling. Yeah. I mean, I'm finally after I got here in 05. Yeah, it's yeah. 2023. You've, you've been doing it for a while, almost 20 years. But that that's the story. Yeah. And so when I have conversations with actors and they, you know, to see how fast things are moving there's kind of like this like f you type vibe you know what i mean but my thing is this though i've struggled already yeah like i did 17 years of hoops that damaged my body i felt like rejection i've been the star player sometimes i was sitting on the end of the bench sometimes like i wanted to quit like i broke bones like i felt that you know what i mean so it's good that you felt that rejection yeah. because the the acting industry is all about it's rejection. It's brutal, and I didn't realize it's even harder to break into acting than it is to be a professional athlete. Because I remember being in school one day, and they were very real with us. They said, you know, on a, on a roster, on an athletic roster, a team roster, there's a certain demographic of guys that are physically able to do a job. You know, like I can dunk a basketball. I don't know if any of y'all can dunk a basketball in here. Nope. But I mean, we could all the hoop was right. like right over <laughs> five feet tall. Fisher so, Price hoop. Really? I think yeah. Fisher Price hoop, you can do some shit. Maybe exactly. Pick me up. Exactly. <laughs> jump with me. Exactly. So like I can jump, I can shoot better. No offense to anybody. I can shoot better than y'all. I can yeah. play yeah. better defense than you. But that would and but any of us in here could probably go out for the same role if a role was open. Right? So you could get it, you could get it, you get it. So the pool of people. To be an actor is like huge. Right. The pool, the roster to be an athlete is like, you know, this big. But there are a lot of athletes. But any, my point is this. Anybody could be an actor. You know, there's only a certain demographic of people who can play a professional sport. And when they put that into perspective, I was like, oh, did I make the right choice? Like, coming out here, you know? But, I mean, well, obviously you did. Yeah. Like, yeah. so how smooth was it? Like, Danny, don't get upset. It- yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I, you know what? I don't get upset about that because that wasn't my path. Yeah, right. Right. And like it's when I figured when think. I figured that out because I came out here thinking I was gonna be a movie star. Right. Like right away. Like because, we all do. Yeah. In my, what, growing up, I was the class clown. Yeah. I was, you know, I got nominated for every category in my high school, like most attractive, most popular, wittiest, all that shit. Yeah. So when I came out here, I I had all that that ego built yes. up. Yes. And then when I got here, somebody deflated my bloom. Right. Like right, right away. Right. Because that's it's like the best of every town is here. Exactly. Of every country, you know. Exactly. It's like you are the man where you're from, but yes. 
here it's like you know you're a big there's fish a bunch a of you pot. yeah, yeah. You're you're a big so fish it's the best of everywhere there. going out for the same stuff right um i don't want to say easy but i will i do believe in divine in divinity and Definitely. the path if you are truly open to that path and accepting to that path um we don't have to struggle the way we think we need to struggle if you're open to it I'll just put it like this. Like I was, I was in a gym. Oh, everything that's ever good to me, everything that ever happened to me good here happened in a gym. You know, I was just minding my business. I didn't spend a lot of time going to parties or anything here. Like I remember being in the gym. Maybe that's why it was easy. <laughs> we spent a lot of time going to parties. Discipline. Right? We, spent yeah. a lot of, we spent a lot of time going to parties. Yeah. Yo, after college, man, we partied so hard. I was like, I can't sustain this anymore. Like, yeah. my, we want to hear. We gotta. We gotta touch on the little party in yeah, a little bit. We'll, we'll touch on that. Down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I we'll remember being in a gym. The sky approaches me. I had a really traumatic experience happen to me in DC before I got to LA. So being living this la life i was so deterred from so i came out here super authentic super guarded too this guy approaches me in the gym his name's chris um he was like you actor i was like mm, sure i can be whatever you want me to be <laughs> like he was like you have headshots i was like no I, I was in school at the time i was four months into school i didn't have any headshots when i say that you know divinity like m m one of my good friends from dc his name's colville is a photographer just happened to be in LA that same weekend that he asked me and somebody told me he was in town. He didn't even tell me. Um, I hit him up. I said, Hey, can we shoot some headshots, man? I need, I need, I need some headshots for this, you know, this, this casting. He said, sure. So we went to the Disney hall in downtown one morning, like 9am shot some, some headshots. They were, I didn't know what I was doing. So they weren't particularly great, but they were good. They were good enough to get me into the room. I auditioned for Ruthless. This was Ruthless at the time. I memorized 16 pages of dialogue Shit. the night before. What? Damn. Um, you memorize plays your whole life. You can memorize some, some words, you know what I mean? So I walked in, um, forgot all my lines. Yeah. Forgot That's all my hard. lines. Like Tyler Perry, like he was in the room. I wasn't expecting him to be there. While he walked in, I was like, oh, I just forgot everything. I didn't even know where to stand. I didn't know anything, yeah. you know? Something just told me to pull the paper out and just read in character. And I just did that. Otherwise, I would have said nothing. Mm -hmm. Did that. You memorize 16 pages of dialogue and they go over half a page of, of the audition, right? I was like, okay. Uh, they cut me off, and I was like, oh, okay, great. This is a great, good experience. I'm gonna go to my car and, and you know, cry. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. we've all done cried, that before, cried, right? <laughs> so I get a call like a couple of days later, and I got written into the script as a character, and that's how it began. So you know, I ended up on Ruthless, and then it was just tryouts from there. Like, I got through a couple scenes thrown at me just to see how I would do. Um, acting came just kind of naturally i just wasn't in my head about anything i was like oh this, this is make it conversational like yeah. what would i do if i was in the situation and that's that's what i did and it worked out but from there it was guest star recurring series regular then i got put on another show as a recurring um commercial started coming i started getting rid of reps and all that managers and everything just started flowing you know naturally and at the right time when i needed it you know, and that's how I got, that's how I got into acting. Right place, right time. What's it like working with Tyler Perry? Man. Because he seems like, I met him once when I was working at an event and he was so cool. Man. So cool. He's like, how do I say this? <laughs> <laughs> like, be careful. Man. First of all, I just want to speak on his generosity. You know, he's given so many people an opportunity when a lot of people will say no, he'll roll the dice on you. That's what he did for me. That's what he's done for a lot of people. He's changed people's lives. I remember being on set, working with him. If you can, if you can work with him, you can work anywhere because of the pace in which he shoots. At least for the shows, you know. It's it's. I remember getting on set. I was expecting blocking, a rehearsal. You know, some something. I get on set. He was like, "Okay, stand here. Da, 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 you're gonna be coming from here." Da, 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 and action. And I was like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" We didn't go over no rehearsal, nothing. But I was in panic mode. 
And the scene required panic. So whatever I was experiencing in real life as panic was, I was like, oh, I was just ran. And that's what the scene was. So I was just running. Like, that's that was my first taste of him, you know. Um, I've gotten to see how he works and be with him when he directs. You know, he sees things that people just don't see. He has, like, you know, several cameras set up and, like, he's watching these screens all at one time. And he gets it usually in one take, one or two takes. And if it's really, really bad, like, he'll direct it through. But most of the time, you know, he trusts his actors to, you know, bring it. Bring it. He can get it, you know, uh, pretty pretty fast. I've never really seen that before. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, He's a mastermind. Clint Eastwood is somebody who does, they, they'll do, like, one take. Yeah. Yeah. He won't even tell you action. No. So it's like it's like a sign of a good director sometimes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's um a good director, and I feel like, you know, as, as an actor, you want to feel trusted, you want to feel valued, um, like you're doing a good job. And usually a good job for him is next. Mm. That's how you know you did well. Yeah. You know, if if it's not good, then it, they'll touch on it, but usually it's like, oh. Okay, that was great. And then move on. And you, you killed it. <laughs> killed it, yeah. 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 Like, like you said, giving you that much trust. Like, yeah. That's got to make you feel so confident yeah. as an actor. Like, And then, yeah, he's just putting a lot of faith in you. That's got to make anybody feel really good in that yeah. position. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's, an even, he's an even better person than uh, a director or producer, man. He's just really stand up. <clears throat> I've just seen the way he he just does everything first class for people. You know, um, keeps his word. He's just put so many people on, and and there's a lot of people who who've never worked on another network or another job, and they're you know well off to do because he's just used them over and over and over and over again. Yeah, people who would never get opportunities probably never get opportunities outside. You know, yeah. he's, just, he's kept them. Yeah. There was one time I I had him in an event in Blind Dragon. And I was bartending with another bartender and Ludacris. It was uh, it was fucking Steve, it was uh Stevie Wonder's birthday party. Mm -hmm. Fucking crazy, so cool, like hundred people, and Ludacris is up there singing. Yeah, and the other bartender I was with was behind fucking the bar with me, belting it out. The kid could really sing. Tyler Perry grabbed him from behind the bar, mm -hmm. brought him mm -hmm. to the front, mm -hmm. and gave him a mic. Oh, to yeah. Sing oh yeah, like, what? And the kid was so nervous. He yeah. It up and the rest of the night he was soapy. Like, yeah, was shot. I yeah. blew it. I was like, yeah. yeah, I think it did, bro. Yeah, but like it was just so cool that somebody like he t he was so nice to us, tipped us so yeah. well. Like he was such a kind individual. It was just really cool. Yeah, he he's for the people. Like he's for the underdog. He's for the people. I've seen him do that over and over again. Like if some if he even glimpses another thing about him, you can he can be in a room of people. A room of producers, a room of casting directors, they'll all say no, and he'll be like, no, yes. Yeah. He'll see something in that person, and and he's usually never wrong. Maybe like, he's told me like maybe once or twice, is, but most of the time he sees something that most other people don't see, and it ends up working out. The actor ends up working out. Yeah. It does well. Man, I think I auditioned for Tyler Perry, like, but I, I just, I don't know. For sure. Just, uh, I forget. It was uh, it was so long ago. I was still walking at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Different. It's a different life. Literally a different life. It's literally a yeah. different life. I was, yeah, back then, like, I took so much for granted as an actor. Mm. I thought I had it all. I, I thought I could get off on raw talent. Yeah. And looks and personality and just wasn't, I was I was hung over most of the time in my auditions. And yeah. I, I ruined a lot of chances like yeah. that. Yeah. I've learned I've learned not to do that early. Just just not take it for granted. And another thing is when you do get a no, you know, a lot of people feel like well, there's something wrong with me. Why didn't I get that? You know, and it's like it has nothing to do with you. Like somebody was just looking for something specific and you are enough. You're you're enough. It's just wasn't that that wasn't the opportunity for you. Yeah. I just learned how to deal with rejection. It's like, oh, it's not personal at all. It's not personal at all. No, but. not in the slightest. Yeah, someone told me, uh, I forget who it was, a casting director or something, that a production is a, is a puzzle. Yeah. And these people are just putting the, the puzzles yes, together. If you just don't fit, they're not going to force you yeah, in. Yeah, that's it, it fine. It won't work. And that's okay. Because at the same time, too, like a lot of people, like their livelihoods are depending on 
that make There's like the right an decision. intricate right decision. It's yeah. like an intricate balance. It's like a ladder of balance. So if somebody feels like they didn't cast properly or somebody, you know, made a mistake, their their livelihood is in jeopardy. So people are, you know, they have that in mind as they're, you know, making decisions, which I understand. You also don't know about like somebody's connection or what you spark in somebody else. Like I went out on auditions in the past and like I didn't get it. And I would know people like, yo, you just reminded the casting director of her ex. Yes. Like you, she really, rem and like that's why you were great, but she yeah, just felt it's like yeah. you can't control that. Sh right? Can't control you it. You can't control yeah. other people's experiences. Like it's you're like you said, man. Divi like divinity, right yeah. place, right time. Right it just time. You yeah. roll with the path. But like, let's get into that part because knowing yeah. you, man, you're like a very spiritual person. You, you're man. very much about your 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 alone time, need to recharge, and like that's a huge thing, especially in this world today. Yeah. Like you're not on social media anymore, no. all that. Like tell us a little bit about that because that's a big part that people underestimate. I don't know what point in time I'm, my perspective started to shift, you know, but my, my thing is this, like, I want to make sure that everything I do, everything I say, everything I portray to be is authentic, 100% authentic. So if I like something, why? If, do I like it because it's popular? Do I like it because... Somebody who I admire likes it, or do I like it? Like, why do I like what I like? And, I, and I've come to find that a lot of the things I like aren't that popular. Um, we were talking about the sandal thing earlier. Yeah. I, was, I grew up in basketball culture, you know, like Kobe's, Jordan's, LeBron's, you know, every shoe I've worn. And I started, I was like, whoa, I have all these shoes I wear them once. I wear my a pair of Jordans once a year. Why do I have all these things? And I really, I was like, oh, this is the influence that I've, you know, this is something I've done my whole life that has influenced me. But I don't really care about these. I started wearing. I started doing stupid stuff. Like I would wear like a really expensive pair of Jordans outside and cut grass or to the gym and just irritate people. They're like, why are you? Wearing? I'm like, they're shoes. I'm supposed to wear them. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what now I was doing. You know up what in mean? some yeah, like, like, what are we doing? Like, they're shoes. So, I, I can't be stressed about where I step because I don't want to mess up my Jordans. Like, I got need to walk. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, like, I'm, I, I, be, I sought this journey for peace, man. Um, peace has become very quiet um, and very not, not popular. So, you know, I started... I noticed the difference in my, I don't have anxiety, but I'm prone to it, especially being out here. There's a lot going on, as you guys know. Um, I got off social media and I've, I've just tried to find ways to simplify my life and shift my perspective and, and what I really like. And a lot of that has been outside. And the more, I, more time I find myself outside in nature traveling, the less I need, you know, because I was traveling. I was like, oh, I need to take this and this and this. And, this. and it became an irritant. Like all these things have become irritants to me. I have this rule in my home. Like if I don't wear a pair of shoes or a pair, a pair of clothing, if I have something in there that I'm not utilizing regularly, it's gone. I don't care how painful it is. It could be a pair of shoes. I've gotten rid of shoes, TVs, game consoles. A lot of stuff just because I was like, I'm not using this. It's just visually, it's pissing me off. So I want it, I want it out of here. I want Man, it out of here. I'm, I applaud you so much because those are thoughts that I've had. Yeah. Like trying to cut down on things. Like I hate social media. Yeah. But like I use, you know, there is that argument that you use it for your business. Yeah. And for acting. Yeah. And, you know, to gain followers. But I, I don't like where the culture of acting is. No. You know, you go to a casting now and they ask you how many Instagram followers yeah. you got like that and yeah it's, that's annoying it is it is i think um i think i think if you can find this has been big for me lately if you can find peace outside of the human construct of society of like what you're supposed to be doing what makes you successful um if I have this happening in my acting career, then I'll feel fulfilled. All that stuff for me has nothing to do with acting. It has nothing to do with acting. It has nothing to do with any any profession. It's not put into people, into finances. 
to pop nothing like that's a whole separate peace and joy and entity that i have somewhere else like that that fuels me somewhere else that has nothing to do with with the business at all i feel like if you put your identity your value your self esteem and things that you cannot control or not conducive to human like growth and development you you're, you're going to be you're going to have disappointment for a really yeah. long time you're always chasing something yeah you're you always chasing it you know and, and it's no cool presence. it's cool that someone has a you know a better looking partner than you or like more money than you or a nicer car like you're never going to be happy if you think that upping the next man is going to make it's going to make you happy. You have to do that work somewhere else and be authentic. Like what what truly makes you happy? I mean, you how know? many people are rich and successful? I mean, the famous Jim Carrey quote: "It's like I wish everyone could be rich and famous because they could see that that's not the answer. It's not it. It's not it's it. Not it. You got to be right with you first. You got to be right with not, you. You know, I think I think uh, peace is the highest currency. Not for me. Number one, it's the highest currency. The most elusive." Yes, <laughs> mm -hmm. yes, but anything that's not conducive to it, that that um, that's not conducive to to nourishing that, I'm good on it. I'm good on it, and I, I've thought about that a lot lately, and I, I think that's why I have so much peace and 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 security, especially you know talking about spirituality. I know and have no doubt that every day. What I'm doing is ordained by the higher power that I believe in. Therefore, if you book a job that I thought I wanted, I'm cool with that. That wasn't for me. A lot of people talk about, oh, it's for me, it's for me, but you're mad when somebody else books your job. If you truly believe that, you you would be happy for them. Yeah. Like, let's encourage one another and be happy for one another. You know, like, why would I hate you because you booked... Yo, I'm, I'm just blocking what I have coming. You know what I mean? Right. Like, if you really understand that concept... It makes sense, and it will allow you to have joy and peace, man. Because I, you know, can't control that. Yeah, that happened to me last, uh, not last year, uh, tw end of twenty twenty one. I I went out for a, a Netflix movie, mm -hmm. guy in a wheelchair. The description was me. Yeah, everything was me. I was like, this is this is mine right, right. here. <laughs> I didn't even get a call back. Right, and a friend of mine booked it. Right, and uh, he doesn't use a wheelchair, but he's also disabled in a different way. So. It, I was like, "What the f did I do wrong? Yeah. Like, I didn't even get a call back." Yeah, this? yeah. And uh, and then like a few other things, they pa I got passed on. So the end of 2021, I was I fell into this deep depression mm -hmm. because I let the self doubt creep mm -hmm. in and all the questions: Am I good enough? And like you said, I didn't know what was coming. Yeah. In just a matter of months, yep. all this work rained down on me, and then I was like, "Oh shit!" Right. You know. Right. So you just never know. You just never know. You never know. So you don't want you want you want you don't want to waste time and energy focused on somebody else's blessing. You know, it's like it, it adds like some sort of pain and disappointment to what you have coming. You know, you want to be open and and um, receptive wholeheartedly to what you have coming. You know, the second word you said in that thought process mm -hmm. was energy and i don't think enough people take that into consideration like you're saying be, leaving yourself open for blessings but yeah you being negative you thinking well why the fuck didn't i get it right that's what you're putting out into the universe yeah yeah so you're not receiving Absolutely. back like it's a wavelength yeah so you got to attract in what you want but you got to be open to it you got to be like all right cool and being happy for other people is abundance like yo man i'm stoked to hear when you book a job you book a job one of my friends started killing it. it's like like you said if everyone was doing that the world would collectively be a better place the collective energy would yeah. be so It'd be very better. different. It'd be very different. It's like I was thinking about this this morning. I hope I can get it out. Um, it, it's like a matter of like where you're looking, where your focus is. Let me let me get this thought really quick. Let me capture this. Some people talk about like blessings coming out of the blue. Blessings coming out of the blue, or like if my focus on if my focus is on, I'm losing it, y'all. This is not good. <laughs> it was so like profound. It was, man. Like, like sometimes this is a high thought. Like when I'm high, I have these wonderful <laughs> yeah, thoughts yeah. I should be writing down. I write none of them down. And then I'm like, this was so profound. I could make money off this. Well, write none of them down. Like you were saying yeah. with, with sports. Yeah. Out of the blue came your injuries. Yes. Was that a blessing? Because where are you at now? <laughs> you know good, what I mean? Man. Yeah, yeah. At the time, at I the thought time, my no. life was over. I thought life was, I thought I was done, you know? I mean, 
Danny, I think you're the walking example of that. And not using the term walking, but you're the... <laughs> that was... No. But I'm, I'm, that was brilliant. That was but, brilliant. But, but, but you are the but you are the prime example. Like yo, man, Josh, I've known this guy for like over ten years now. We used to work together at nightclubs, um, and the time around his accident, we, we were had something in common. Both of our best friends passed away from a motorcycle mm -hmm. accident mm -hmm. oh, two weeks apart, and we all ran in the same circle. Wow. And then a few weeks later, he got into his accident. Wow. If you ask him, he he and I hear him say it all the time, and it makes me so proud. Where he's like, the best thing that ever happened to him was he got into an accident yeah. and changed the course of his yep, life. And yep, I've yep. never seen him a happier person. Yep. Dude, yep. I was a, I was a shell of myself in wow. that accident. Wow. I was literally just walking. I looked like Danny Gomez, right? But I wasn't Danny Gomez wow. on the inside. I was just. We just I had that mask on. Yeah. Every I was just going to work, masking my my depression with with alcohol and yeah. and always and crying and it, and I'd been in LA up to that point. It was 2016. I got there in 2005, and I didn't do I didn't do anything with my career. Mm. But I did a lot, and I didn't know that. <clears throat> I took it for granted. So after I lost, you know, I, I spinal cord injury, couldn't walk. That's when like my eyes opened. And I just stopped forcing it. Yeah, I stopped forcing it and yeah. just started living and not worrying about like what people thought of yeah. me. And, and and then that helped when I got back into acting because I just didn't care anymore. You didn't care. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of success that comes with that. Like you've heard these stories about how people just, they've been rejected or so many times that they just stop caring. So they just go in just super free. Yep. And things happen like that. It's the last. It's like my it's the first last audition. Gonna, it's the last audition I'm ever gonna do. My Book first. Right, 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 yes, right, right. My first audition. All the time, man. My first audition in the wheelchair. Uh -huh. I, I get a call out of the blue. A friend of mine owns a body part agency, and she's like, "I saw this." She didn't send me in for a body part. It was just she. Uh, she's like, "I saw this audition for somebody in a wheelchair, and I submitted an Instagram photo for you, and they want to see you. Are you interested?" What? And I'm like in my studio apartment, just like. Looking around, like, yes, yeah, f it. Like, I have nothing going on. Yeah, and I went into the audition completely free. I literally rolled in there like this. What's up, everybody? And you know, you don't do that. No, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. people aren't. So yeah, everybody's yeah. like taking yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's like 15 people in there for this commercial audition. Right. And I just went in there, my like myself, did the scene, rolled out. People were laughing. I enjoyed it. Like I felt good. That's a good place. And to I didn't be. even think about it. And then I I booked it. Of course, that's a good place to be. Yeah, but uh, it was that lack of fear. Like yeah. I, I just almost died. Yeah, and like that fear has crept back in now that things are getting more serious. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't affect me as much as before. Like I'm I'm excited for the audition mm -hmm. and I'm ready for the. I'm now I finally feel that I'm ready for this. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I wasn't ready before. But it's like at this point, what's fear to you though? Because like you've been through the most traumatic, fearful point yeah. of your life, right? You've been there. I've yeah. been there. So now it's like when I'm going to do something. What's the worst? I, what's that the worst happen? that could happen? Yeah. I've already hit the lowest point in my life that I could possibly be at. This ain't shit. right. You, you know, like. I was talking to my brother about this yesterday. We we're talking about the concept of fear. Fear is can be paralyzing and costly, but I think what's even more costly is what lies on the other side that you didn't try. Yeah. Like that that's a pain that's even more demoralizing to me, you know. I would I would and it's it's cliche, but I would have been I would have rather been rejected a thousand times than never tried at all because the the what if in the in the resentment of not even trying, the disgust, it, it, that, like that would fester. And that, and, you know, that sits for a long time, man. That can really sit for a long time. Why did not I do that? And as you get older in life, you lack a fuck as you get older. And I think sometimes people think, why didn't I execute things that I was fearful of? Because your life's almost done. And people start getting like, they're like, fuck it. I know people, I have really good 70 year old friends in Burbank. All my f really good friends are like 60 plus awesome like we played bingo together like it's i love them but they all just don't give a shit. like they dye their hair purple and like they go out to like these parties like these old women go out to party on their canes and some of them are you know in these in these different chairs and what and they're just just hanging out they're just like we don't have that much time left it's that childhood that childhood freedom that that's you, what it is that we lose at some point that's what it is right yeah from childhood to adult to elderly, like somewhere in the middle, we get we get it we get it messed up.
we get we get you know jaded and like shelled up you know yeah i think we, we just care we, we care too much about yeah. society's perspective yeah and like going back to homie I, i'm a huge advocate like i love will smith's quote like the greatest things in life happen on the other side of fear yeah i believe if you were truly petrified of it that's the road you're that's, supposed that's, that's to take good, oh yeah that's a good road that's, road. yeah that's yeah. your higher that, that's you questioning because your higher self is like yo you gotta do this yes. but you're so afraid like yo if i fail at yeah. this but it's like yo Anything, I, bro, I was afraid to start this fucking podcast. I was afraid to put my foundation together. I was afraid mm -hmm. to keep further in my career. Every amazing thing I have in my life came from the after effect. Uh, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And a lot of people don't experience that feeling of conquering that fear. Yeah. No. Because that, that feeling is way better. Yep. Yeah. than what you're avoiding. The coolest yeah. feeling though is like, yo, the amount of people that have come up to me and like, yo, man, you've inspired me. Like, yo, just some of my friends, like, yo, man, just watching you do it makes me want to do it yeah. more and it's like that's something you don't even think about you yeah. don't realize your thing of jumping over the edge somebody else like yo man i could do that i feel like that's one of the most beautiful like we're, we're here i feel like that's one of the like reasons why we're here together as human beings is to love and inspire one another when, like yeah. as an artist when you hear somebody say thank you for doing that because I didn't have the courage to do it and you inspired me to do that. That's like one of the best compliments you can get. That's one of the best compliments you oh, can get yeah. as a human being, you know? And I think conquering the fear that first initial time will give you courage to do it over and over and over and over and over again, you know? And the more you do it, I mean, the less, the less challenging it gets. And I'm in a point in my life where there's nothing I'm really scared of at all, you know, besides that, re you know, regret, you know, well, well, what is that? But, you know, getting older and wishing I had done the things I, I, I sought to do, wasting time, mm. like time is of the essence. Like if I have an idea or a pursuit or an ambition, my dad told me this a long time ago, there's a reason why that's there. There's a reason you don't just wake up sometimes, you, like sometimes you wake up and think, oh, I want to do this, but ideas and ambitions and like that pulling of the soul sometimes that's a gift you know like we just like you just said you need to you need to yeah. don't waste time yes don't waste 20 years yeah man dabbling on that maybe just jump in and, and see if what it's happens. burning have, in you like you, yeah have you ever listened to les brown no oh i've brown heard of him no that's right he's one of the best motivational speakers yeah. ever he has this quote i have a picture of it but it, it, it was something to effect of uh the graveyard is the is the richest place on earth because because it's full of people who went to their graves not pursuing the idea, the creation, the movie, the the song. The idea, they kept it inside. Yeah. So they went Tough. Yeah. So and I read that, I was like, I don't want to die no. with all my mm -mm. aspirations inside of me. Yeah, no, you know? no, no, that's tough. And I feel like this is a good time. We're living in an age where, you know, so many more things are possible just the mentality has changed. Like the era we live in, like the, 50 years ago, people were thinking about way more than we were thinking about, you know, like how this is going to make my family look or like what kind of, I don't want to put this image out of my, the people were more conservative. You know? I think there's still a lot of that. I just think we've all done a good job of finding a tribe of people. Like yeah. I believe you attract, you know, what you are and what you put out there. So I think yeah. we've all done a good job of finding a tribe of people that are authentic as us, that mm -hmm. are artists, that are very much like, yo, I don't give a f because I'm surrounded by other people who don't give a That's f encouraging. It's extremely encouraging. encouraging. But I still think, yo, man, when I go back to New York or I go visit other places, there's a ton of people that still have there's it. a lot of that. And it it enables you. Yeah. Like, yo, man, I was one of my dreams I always wanted to, I always wanted to be an artist. I always wanted to perform. You guys were both at my last event. That was the that was the longest set I did, the longest hosting. Nobody knew it, bro. I was shaking. I was f that was one of the most scared most scared I have ever been. Not even just like in an essence of like in an artistic way. Anything I've ever done, I was so afraid. We didn't. Nobody. Yeah, nobody knew. Yeah. I was. My heart was beating through my chest. I was shaking. I'd have somebody do a fucking whole breath work with me before I went on because mm -hmm. I was like. <sighs> You didn't stutter once. Nah. Like, <laughs> like, that's how I know when I was, like, I'm supposed to be doing it because as soon as I stepped up there, the mic got in my hand, the first line dropped. Yeah. I fucking came in and was the most, it's crazy because I went from being the most scared I've ever been to one of the most comfortable places yes. I've ever been. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, you listen to some of the top actors, performers, they say that like the, the those five minutes leading up to once you get on mm -hmm. stage is the worst. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
if Denzel the works. Denzel still throws but, up. Yeah, exactly. Like there. Going on so yeah, you know, like, you yeah. know, it's not just you, and it's people have done it. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Like it was, it, it really is like amazing when you get to when you get to see it, and like like you said, I had a couple people come up to me like, "Yo, man, thank you for that event, shit like that." Like that just makes you feel good. Like you're doing, like you said, in purpose. I believe run this planet for two reasons. One, mm-hmm. to be happy. And mm-hmm. by you being happy, you encourage others to be mm-hmm. happy. Mm-hmm. And to leave the world a better place than we found Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And by you doing what you're doing and encouraging people, you're leaving the world a better Absolutely. place. Absolutely. And that's what the world that's desperately what we need. needs right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I mean, brother, you've done some like in- incredible things. Like you said, there's so many people. So like, who are some of the people that have inspired you that you're grateful for who have given you such, you know, besides someone like Tyler Perry, who we yeah. touched on, you know, that you're one or two people that have really helped your career and helped you grow as a human being? So many people. First and foremost, you know, me and my father weren't, we have gone through rough patches in our relationship, but everything that I've been able to accomplish has been... Um, his words have never left me. You know, we haven't gotten along all the time, but he, I wouldn't be where I am without him. He he was the first one to um, make it okay. You know, when you when you're trying to figure things out in life, and then there's fear. He was like, "It's you're, you're fine. You're gonna be okay." You know, he he talked about the ebbs and flows of life. So I always feel like it's gonna be okay because I remember what my dad. I'm like, if my dad approved it, then I'm good. Nice. You know, that's that's how I feel. Um, my family for their support, you know, um, all my coaches who I've experienced through basketball who were tough on me. My brother, he was taught me discipline, how to push. And then this the community out here. I didn't come out here and really get into a lot of trouble. I met good people immediately. And I had a tribe fast and I met the right people, the right support systems. You're one of them. Being at Enrich, oh, yeah. Spencer's gym, man, like we Gabriel re- Ellis. Yeah, man. We have a really dope gym. Yeah. Gabriel Ellis, he was putting me on, he was putting me on things about how to be an actor that would save me 10 years mm. in my career. Like I didn't know about actors access, how to upload nothing, like getting reps, Everything flowed organically, naturally, and I'm thankful for that. And um, just, just all I can say is God, man. God's real. Yeah. And he, he, um, yeah. God, God is real. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here without, without, without him either. You know, when you look back, when you look back in your life, and we wonder why things are happening to us. When I look back on my life, everything is a puzzle piece. And I see no matter how hard and difficult that time was, it was necessary. It was necessary because I would have not been able to get the next blessing. You can look back and connect. The yeah, I can now. connect every dot. You appreciate every dot. Now you appreciate every, every dot. Leg break, everything. Mm-hmm. Fallouts, hurt, pain, uh, I thought I was going to go to the NBA. That was hurtful for a long time. I was angry. And, and now I was, if I got offered an NBA contract, I would decline it. Like, I'm good. I don't want to run up and down and get yelled at anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Like, those days are over. So I'm just, you know, the way life has flowed and um, just the divinity, man, it's, I feel blessed, man. I'm happy, joyful. I can feel the energy, yeah, man. Yeah, I can man. feel the energy yeah, vibing yeah, off of you, dude. That's it. I love it. I don't man. know how I need to go to this it. gym all the time, man. I only started working out after my accident. I hated really? I hated the gym before, dude. I was I was skinny fat. Uh-huh. That's you that's know, like the, yeah. skinny arms and I had a be- I'd had a belly and like all this yeah, yeah. extra fat and I just hated the gym. Yeah. Now like I can't wait to go back. It's fun, yeah, man. man. It's Mentally fun. it's it, like it's as much a mental workout as yeah. it is a physical one. And and that and that gym, it's you, re- you really find people that are willing to help other people. Like, especially in the industry you're in, they will help you. Yeah. You have a question, you, you need to change reps, like people will inquire for you. They'll plug you. Plug you. Wow. Spence gave me a commercial yeah. once. I've been on commercial shows together. Yeah, it's I put dope. I gave Spence episode, or I allowed him to get episodes on. We help one another. No sh- yeah, nice, like, man. we help one another, and that's 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 been rare to find, and um, I value that. I value yeah, yeah. that. I'm very great. I'm very grateful. Value yeah. your time here, man. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. it. it a lot. Appreciate I appreciate it. that. But wrapping it up, man, this has been a dope conversation. I'm so glad you 
Hopkins came on here. We always love to end the show with like a really either cool inspirational story, a funny story from your basketball career when you used to party in college to being on set. Something that was just like, yeah. that just burns in your brain like, man, that f***ing time. Whether it be good or bad. I, I, will, I will say this. Um, that first year overseas, this is a whole nother conversation, but I, you know, that first year I played basketball overseas changed my whole perspective. Oh yeah. Because I was in Berlin. Have you ever been to Berlin? Anybody? Ever? No. If you want to party, go to Berlin. <laughs> like there's like, I had never party. Like people party from Thursday to Monday the clubs stay open completely. They don't even close. You you party, wake up. I mean, you party from the club, go to get breakfast, go home, take a nap, party again, wake up, maybe take some 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 lunch or whatever, and go back to party. Like you're partying for four days straight. I had never partied this hard as when I was there. I remember coming out of some club at like for me it was like seven a.m. and I just remember seeing like. The sun was up. I had practice in two hours. Ooh. I did a lot of that, like straight from the club, straight to practice. That's I wouldn't advise that. Like I can, I can barely drink wine now. Like I'm, I'm hurting. Like I'm an old man. Now. I know. Like, yeah. Like, but we were partying like crazy in Berlin. Yeah, that was that was one of the best times of my life. Yeah, that was just another Tuesday for us. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, so, okay. No, 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 that's not, <laughs> no, no, no. Honestly, that's how we did it though. Yeah, like, like I up. mean, for us, it was like Monday through Sunday. Um, either we'd be partying on the on on Monday or Tuesday, our days off, drinking, go to work, drinking there after party, sleep, Bro. have lunch, go to work. We used to drink, work a party. We used to work a Sunday day party that would end at, by the time we get out it was eleven o'clock. We would party straight through and go back to work Tuesday night. Oh, well, uh, two days straight. And it would just be, it would be gross. We get like everybody knew, but like you could still keep going. Yeah. Like you take little cat naps here and there, but we would go from the after party to the after party to the hills to someone's how. house to day drink to the boat, which was a terrible idea. Strung out on a boat is never fun. Yeah. Um, back to work. And then you'd crash Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, get up and go back to work that mm -hmm. night. Miss, I'd miss so many auditions. I would go to auditions strung out and hungover. Like a, a, a nice little day party is like all I can handle now. From four to nine, yeah. I'm, I'm in bed by like 10, 30, 11. I can only do like, after like two hours though, I'm like, all right, my social battery is done. It's done, yeah. I, I can't talk to any of yeah. you. I'm out. Right. Shady dip it out. It's hard for me to get me out like nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go like, anywhere. It's frightening. I, me I have to mentally prepare myself. And then I, I'll just talk myself out of it. I'm like, <laughs> I know me. Yeah. Because yeah. once I do start drinking and, like, and there's people around, like, I just don't know when to stop. Yeah. And then it's the next morning and I'm like, why, why did I do this myself again? Yeah, there's always that Too regret. Old. There's always that regret. Hangover's like two to three days now and it's just, it's bad news. Yeah. That, the, but the, the lenses I was talking about, like, um, I, whenever I go out, I have to have some sort of, some sort of like glasses, some sort of clear lens because I feel protected, number one. And then I'll take like a half of edible, which is all I can handle. And it's like a little party like in myself yeah. and I'm, I'm chilling. Like, yeah. It opens you up a yeah, little. And yeah. as soon as that edible starts to wear and then off, it's like, yeah, like, it's time nah, to go home. Good. It's time to go home. Yeah. yeah like my I favorite can't. part of going now is what I'm going to eat after. Yes. Oh, I'm absolutely. thinking about the food I'm eating the whole time I I'm I only there. go to dinners now. Dinners yeah. Dinners and lunches. I, I don't like going, like unless I'm going to support a homie in an event. I'll meet somebody for a dinner. That's it. Yeah. That's I really like I really like meeting people for breakfast. That's a good it's one. It's like in the middle, it's like an hour or two in a day. Breakfast ain't a long meal. Yeah. You catch up. It's quick to the point. See you later. Yeah. That's it. Like that's my favorite. That's it. What is some fun uh stuff like some fun things you did on set, some scenes that you remember, like something you got to do that you never thought you'd be oh, able to do? Man. Well, working on Ruthless, Ruthless is a crazy, crazy show. There's a lot happening. What's on uh it's on BET? It's right? on BET Plus. It's airing on BET now, though, but um, I sh I've shot... One of the craziest things I did, I had to learn how to shoot a bow and arrow with fire on it, like, Ooh, damn. two seconds <clears throat> before a scene. Dude. Like, I didn't even know... And the, the bow was for people who are right-handed. I'm left-handed. Oh, <laughs> so I had to pretend like I was right-handed, and like I was shaking and shooting arrows everywhere, <laughs> fire on them. So we were supposed to... I was supposed to shoot into this cabin... This was before we shot it, but as soon as the lights went on, there's something about when those lights go on that 
that those instincts just kick in right. and it's like, okay, I, I know I've been doing this for 10 years all of a sudden. I shot this arrow through a cabin and it like blew up. What? And that was pretty cool. Yeah. We have like a lot of stunts and like crazy. You do your own stunts? For the majority. Yeah. But there's a couple of things that, you know, when I get to a certain level of, of stunts, I would like to do my own. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, just I don't want to complicate the set. So there's I some just, they won't uh, let you do. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, it is cool. a business. If you get hurt, yeah. 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 yeah you know uh, what I mean? get sued. But They're there are some sure stuff. Yeah. I'm cool with doing, you know, Hanging off airplanes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. If I go, I'm not, you know, I go doing something I love. Like, <laughs> right, 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 right. I go out with a bang, you know? Yeah, brother, do us a favor. Plug yourself. Um, obviously, you're not on social, but like the social, when your, when your show is on. The third season just started airing the second half on in December. Um, I'm also on The Oval. That's airing now. And... The movie will be, I think, will be put out later on this year. We're shooting. So. Oh, we definitely want to have you back after that movie. Yeah. We'd love to hear about that experience. So, yeah, I mean, just a, a, an enlightening conversation. Yeah. Things that you, I've, I've thought about, you know, certain things that you brought up, but I've never, I, I don't act on them. So mm-hmm. I want to, you know, take what, I, what what we learned today. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> we hope everybody else learned too, man. It's always a, a great conversation. Yeah, man. Absolutely. It's great having you on. Absolutely. Appreciate thank you, you guys. Appreciate no, thank it. you, man. Yeah, everybody, that's the show for today. See you next time on A Chaos. Peace.